Hello, it's Stacy from the Loom Room here. I'm doing something I don't normally do because, well, let's face it, this is, uh, we're in day three of what's been called a lockdown in France. And uh, I think we're all doing what we normally don't do or not doing what we normally do. So I'm out on my dog walk and I just thought I would share with you a few thoughts that have just crossed my mind and been planted there by other people's words. And um, hope that they inspire you like they've inspired me. So normally this time of year, I'm getting ready to have my first welcome, my first guests here, my first visitors for a weaving course. And we have a lot of fun. People love this part of France. It is beautiful, which is why we moved here. And also the way of life is just normally just heavenly. I mean, it's still heavenly, but we're not socializing. We're not getting out and about and meeting folks like we normally do. The coffee in the patisserie is not happening at the moment. You can go and get your bread, but you need a piece of paper to take with you to show the police that you are going for essential supplies and you come straight home again. And I'm walking the dog in the lanes behind my house where very few people generally come. And we're not allowed to walk together unless we're two meters apart. And um, yeah, so I normally don't meet anybody, especially walking at midday like I do because most people are eating their lunch. Oh, excuse me just a second. Okay, yes, you see Bailey. And that's a rare occurrence. Somebody who's on his bike taking exercise don't normally see people around here doing that either. The roads are quiet. The skies are quiet, very quiet, apart from the birds who are having a field day, of course. What I wanted to talk to you about is terminology and thinking in this turbulent time. Oliver! Oliver! You see? And it's been classed as a, called a lockdown here in France, which has a really sort of prison-like mentality about it, a, a real connotation of you can't move, you can't function, everything stops. And whilst that's true to a very large extent of daily life has stopped as we normally know it, I don't think that's really a very inspiring term for creative people, at least most, well, for anybody, to be honest. But I heard the word yesterday, cocooning. And at first I thought, oh, goodness me, cocooning, you know. And then I stopped to think. <laughs> Some people will cocoon by wrapping themselves in the duvet, sitting down and watching end-to-end -end box sets on TV, or going through their DVD collection, their film collection, or sitting and reading a book or six. And all of those are good things to do. <laughs> but what actually happens in a cocoon, a lot, a heck of a lot. It doesn't close down. It reintegrates. It, 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 everything changes completely. Everything dematerializes, changes form, and reassembles in a different model, in a different way, ready to emerge when the time is right for the next stage of development, for the next stage of life. And that's really what we're doing right now, isn't it? We can hunker down and have the bunker mentality and, and not do anything, or we can use this opportunity to face how we do things, look at them and see how we can change them, and then make those changes so that we come out of this in a more positive, more open perhaps, different way of working, a different way of being, different way of living our lives. And that to me is an enthusing interpretation, is, um, is something that inspires me. It really does give me energy and, and hope. And I've obviously, any of us could be carrying this thing. I'm feeling physically well at the moment. I'm sure many of you are exactly the same. But we could be carrying this thing and not know it. We could be infected and not knowing, know it. We could have actually, with those snuffles that we had a day or so ago, actually have had it and not know it. We could have so easily pass it on. So that is 
something that's so dangerous. And, and my father, I mean, tomorrow, in fact, we were due to go to celebrate with my father his 90th birthday in the UK for a lovely family weekend, which we've all been looking forward to hugely for well, a good six months or more. And of course, that's all postponed. But we all decided today, whether or not it's a foolish move, I don't know, we've postponed it for six months. So this morning, we've rebooked everything. We've re rebooked the flights, rebooked the accommodation for six months' time. We're staying optimistic, we're staying hopeful, and if further on down the line things don't improve and the situation here continues, then we shall have to reassess it nearer the time. But, you know, and I really feel for people, I mean, I really feel my dad's not, as I said, he's 90. You just don't know what's down the road. And it's a scary time. But at the same time, it's not all doom and gloom. There are things to be gleaned. So before I fall over <laughs> on the next bit of path, which is quite rough, I'm going to leave you with those thoughts and uh, hope we can speak soon and uh, see, see you soon. Love from France. Bye-bye.